In the sleepy seaside village of Dunmore East, on the east coast of Ireland, there lived a very happy family. They were called the Hardys. Every year on New Year's Eve, the entire village gathered at the seashore to ring in the new year. There was always a grand party and at midnight everyone would be assembled on small fishing boats to watch a firework display from the sea. Our story begins when the children are out at sea in a boat of their own. It was very exciting to be out and about this late at night when they ought to be in bed. Their boat was old and the paint was peeling, but tonight they didn't care. They sat on the benches and tucked blankets around their legs. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yippee! The fireworks lit up the sky. The children stared in wonder. Hip hip hooray! Happy New Year! From the shore, brilliant orange bonfires which dotted the beach swayed and sent up waves of smoke and sparks. While lively music performed by the local band floated out onto the sea, everyone cheered and hugged each other. The party was a great success. Everyone was happy, so happy that they didn't notice that the weather had started to change. A cold wind began to blow. The boat started to rock and the water began to chop and splash down from the sides. Yeah. At first, the children thought it was funny and whooped and yelped with each new wave. Wow, that was a big one. Cool. This is brilliant. Can we stay here all night? Yeah, right. It'd be freezing if you stay here all night. No, I wouldn't. Please, can I? No. Uh, that's not fair. Don't be silly, Ryan. Be a good boy and stop screaming. A roll of thunder drowned out the sound of the band and a flash of ripped of lightning ripped through the sky. Then raindrops began to fall. Lightning blotted out the stars and the friendly moon. It flashed and crackled and lit up the sky. The children watched a huge drop of rain were swallowed by the sudden unfriendly sea. With a sigh and a few moans, the other boats began to head to the shore. We better go back. Uh, no, please Ashton, just a few more minutes. It's getting dangerous. But it's so beautiful over here and Mom and Dad said we were allowed. Well, I suppose five more minutes will be okay. Cool. Ryan grabbed a handful of sweets. Ryan, stop, you'll be sick, you're so greedy. Shut up, this is a party. I can eat what I like. Don't blame us if you're getting sick only. Ryan le le leaned over and punched Maeve in the arm. The bow wobbled as Maeve stretched over Ashlyn to give him a slap. Stop fighting, you're acting like babies. Ryan stared, I'm only. Quiet, that's enough. They sat in silence for a minute. Then Ryan began to kick Maeve and Ashton and Maeve tried to grab his legs to stop him from moving. The boat swayed violently. Ryan, be a good boy and stay still please. We can have the picnic on the beach. Maeve is pinching me. I am not. Ouch, she is. Stop her, Ashton. The other boats were nearly at the shore. The children waited cross and cranky. Let's go now. Maeve, take the other and help me please. It's hard. The water is crappy. Choppy. The waves had risen higher and higher and a strong wind was howling furiously. Their tiny boat was pushed and jolted by the black sea. Their children held onto each other tightly. I'm afraid. Push, I'll get us home safely. The sea wailed, the boat rocked violently from side to side. Enormous black waves hit the sides of the boat and washed over their heads, soaking them to the bone. Ah. A huge wave bashed the side of the boat, nearly toppling them over. The light in the lantern blew in. I'm afraid. Mum, Dad, they can't hear you. They're at the shore. Mm. Hang on, everyone. Ryan jumped from his seat. The boat tipped to one side and Maeve and Ryan were thrown up into the air. With a jump and a thump and a sudden scream, they flew over the side of the boat. A flash of lightning lit up their faces and they stared in horror. The wind was so noisy that they didn't even hear the splash as they hit the cold, icy water. Ashton leapt to her feet and jumped off the boat. I'll save you. Wait, try to swim. The children gasped and flapped up the boat in the waves for a few minute, moments. The water was freezing cold and the waves were tossing them around. The sea became like a giant <coughs> mixing bowl. The children bobbed on the surface and then were carried away on a wave and then dumped back into the swell of the storm. Ryan, stay there, I'm coming. Help, help. Ashton swam towards Ryan and tried to catch him, but a huge wave grabbed him and sucked him under. Ashton thrashed around and tried to reach Maeve. She saw a flash of her red coat and then she was gone. Before long, all three children rested on the seabed. 
it was very, very dark. And then a strange music filled the night. And out of the shadow, a beautiful merman, mermaid appeared. She stroked each child on the cheek, then beckoned to her friends. A group of dazzling mermaids, mermen, and sea creatures came out of the darkness, squealing and laughing with delight as they saw the children. Nayara placed a magical necklace over each of the children's heads and waited. Their children's faces began to shimmer. Slowly their skin took on the rose pink and white colour that they had been above the sea. The mermaid smiled in delight and wiped the tear from her eye. Then she turned and addressed the crowd who had been watching her in silence. They have arrived. These are our children, the chosen ones. The crowd watched in wonder but didn't move closer. Now that they knew the children were special, they were afraid to come near. Come now. How me take them to Bellacqua? Several mermen came forward. They lifted the children up in their arms and carried them away to the undersea world. When Ashton woke, she found herself in a small cave. Ryan and Maeve were lying beside her fast asleep. Ashton looked around at the unfamiliar place. She looked very strange. Everywhere there were sparkles of light and shiny stones and shells. Was this a dream? She blinked and tried to wake up. It looked like they were in a strange land, but this couldn't be true. She shook Brian and Mev. Quick, wake up! Mev, Brian, I think you must be dreaming or something. Where are you? What happened? I want my mummy. Don't be a baby. Can't you see we're somewhere magical? It's an adventure. Let's explore. They tried to stand up. They wobbled, laughed, and realised that they were underwater. Swim. We are on the water. We have to swim. There's a light out there. Let's see what it is. They swam to the edge of the cave and peered out. A huge green plant swayed backwards and forwards, reaching out its tendrils to them as if asking them to come out and play. They heard a noise and the sound of voices, and then from behind a tree a strange appeared. Something about her was very, very familiar, but the children didn't think they had ever met her before. She smiled at them, and their hearts were filled with peace. It was a strange feeling, a kind of magic. Hello, I'm the Arab. Did you sleep well? Where are we? I want to go home. Don't be afraid. You are safe now. Can you tell us the way home, please? <laughs> so many questions. I'll tell you everything I know. At the bottom of the sea, stand here in the of the chamber. I'm afraid you had an accident last night. The children stared at her in shock. Our parents will be worried. I'm sorry, you can no longer go back. This is your home now. Ryan and Maeve began to cry. No, I'm sorry, we have to go back. I'm sure this is a very nice place, but we must leave at once. Don't be sad, this is your destiny. We've been waiting for you for a long time. Our queen told us one day you'd come. And now, here you are. We belong on earth, not here, wherever this is. I'm sorry, this is your home now. You are the chosen ones, you cannot go back. Ah, let us go. You can't kidnap us, I'll call the police. <coughs> Children, calm down. You do not understand. You are dead. Dead? No, that can't be. You died last night. I saved you. Now it is your duty to make the sea safe, and it is, your, it is your fate to help other children and save them from drowning. Look at the medals around your necks. They will only walk on the chosen ones, and that is you. Then, for the fourth time, the children noticed the necklaces. They had strange writing on one side, and a picture on, of a sea city on the other. Hey, where did these come from? Take it off. Necklaces are for girls. You must wear them. I put them on you last night. What are they for? We have had those necklaces in Balakwa for a long time, and we have tried them on several children who have come to us like you have. But you are the first children who have died and come back to life. What? Died? Help, Ashlyn. We're not dead. If we're dead, we couldn't talk or swim or... I am afraid you are dead, but it's not such a bad thing down here. I don't want to be dead. Save me. Ashlyn, take me back. I'll never be bored again, I promise. Hush, Pat, you're not dead. It's impossible. I'm sorry, but you are. You're needed here. There's no point in fighting. Your mission is very important, and you have each other. Come out now, meet everyone. You'll feel better. She stretched out her hand and beckoned them to follow her. The water bubbled and blinked. A school of tiny pink fish floated by and smiled at the children. Did you see that, Maeve? Those fish just smiled at us. Wow. See, it's nice down here. Please don't be afraid. Come along. Well, okay, we'll come for a while, but we can't stay long. 
Don't worry, this is just a dream. In the morning we'll wake up and be in our beds. Are you sure we aren't dead? Of course. If we aren't dead, we'll be in heaven. Maybe this is heaven. No, it's not. Come on now. Yeah, Maeve, don't be silly. They held hands and swam out after the air. Everything about the underground city of Balakwe was magical. The water was warm and clear, and it was easy to swim or just float around. The sea creatures had their own miniature world. They even had real houses and a bedroom to share. They had beds which were made from a soft sand and foam, which were held down by a small rock. And the other mermen and mermaids were friendly and brought them food every day and showed them how to live in this new world. There was also an underwater sea skill, which was a surprise. The sea creatures didn't have to learn Irish or maths, but they did have to learn about sea safety and the history of their people. But the classes were interesting, and even Ryan didn't mind going along for the lessons. Children, there's something important I have to tell you. Remember the part of the city which is dark and I told you is out of bounds? Yes. yes. Aloysius, an evil merman lives there and I, want, I wanted to keep you away from him until you were strong. What? An evil merman? But all of the merman have been so nice. Well, not him. Once he was good, he was the king's favourite son, but he, but he became greedy and lost his way. What did he do? Well, it started out with something small. He began to steal things from lost ships. Things like clothes and books and pieces of good gold and silver. He was supposed to help the giant sailors and take them back to shore, but instead he wanted to become one of them. He longs to be human, but it is impossible. He has a tail instead of legs and belongs beneath the sea, not above it. He cannot, but he cannot accept that and has caused much pain and terror in his quest to become a man. Wow, he sounds cool, like a pirate. No, Ryan. Aloysius is not cool at all. He's a very bad merman, must be kept under lock and key. Lock and key? Do you mean they have a prison down there? Yes, we do. And it's, and it's guarded day and night. We don't like prisons. We'll keep away, don't we? You must. Aloysius can be very charming and is very dangerous. You must promise me never to go near him. We promise. promise. He's locked up for most of the time, but once a month he's allowed out to swim for a full day and night so he gets some exercise. It is then that you must be careful to keep as far away from him as you can. We will, promise. How will we know if it's him or our friendly merman? <laughs> well, as I said, he longs to be human. He insists on wearing a, a pair of human underpants. Underpants? Yes, he looks ridiculous. Years ago, he came across a shipwreck. On the ship, there were trunks of clothes and treasure. Aloysius ignored the treasure, he went straight for the clothes and tried to dress himself as a man. But you see, his body is not shaped like a human's, and so he had terrible trouble getting dressed. Eventually, he found a pair of underpants which were big enough to fit over his tail, and he put them on. And ever since then, he has worn some kind of underwear to prove his point. But he must look very silly. Oh, he does. But everyone is afraid of him, so I don't tell them. Well, he'll be easy to recognise. Yes, but don't be fooled. He is not your friend, never will be. He is desperate to get his hands on your necklaces. All he needs is one of them, and he can do terrible damage. To so stay together and keep away from them. Before long, the children were ready to go to work. They were excited and every day waited until they could save a life. The sirens and sea folk were also anxious for the children and hoped that they were indeed the chosen ones and would save lots of lives. They looked for ships that were in trouble or the sounds of anyone in distress. Several days passed without anything happening. One morning, the sea began to churn and chop. It was so hard to see. The sand from the bottom of the ocean was loose and blinding, swirling around their eyes and scratching their skin. The wind blew the water and the waves turned themselves into huge mountains of grey and green. I'm tired, let's go back. No, Mav, come on now, my arrow's counting on us. But there's no one here, let's go. No, let's wait a bit and see. I have a feeling something exciting is going to happen. You and your premonitions. The sea growled and then they heard it. The unmistakable cry of someone in distress. Listen, Listen did, did you hear, hear that? that? Someone, someone needs our help. help. In the meantime, while the children were chatting, an unwelcome guest stole upon them. Aloysius, the evil merman. He appeared out of the dark green waters of the north and watched them quietly. His face contorting into a huge grin, his eyes flashing with delight. 
his tail beating steadily as he followed them. He was very, very excited. For the first time in a very long time, there were human children within his reach. They were so close he could smell them. He listened to them. He eyed them up. He hated them with all his might. He raced after them, through the currents and the waves and the foam, careful to remain out of sight. Every now and then, he had to stop and pull up his underpants. They were frayed around their waistband and had started to come loose. But they were all he had left. All of his other treasures had been taken from him. He pulled at them with one hand and the other shook his fist at the children and swore under his breath. Aha, watch out children, here I come. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> the children swam towards the sound. The sea fought against them and they had to struggle hard to free themselves from the swirling seaweed and layers of waves and foam. Finally they broke through and felt the cold fresh wind on their faces. Oh dear, I can't see a thing. Are we too late? Look, over there, I see something. A young boy was trashing around in the water. The waves were cascading over his face and dragging him up and down. He was small, his face was white and his eyes were closed. He was kicking and grunting and crying with his mouth open, gasping for air. But he didn't speak. Ashton swam towards him and tried to grab him. It's okay, I've got you. Ah. Andy slipped out of her reach. Ryan came up behind him and grabbed him with all his strength. Relax, we're here to help you. Ah. Take my hand, don't panic, it'll be okay. Little boy, don't be afraid, we've come to save you. The seed shone, they were tossed around. They had to shout to make themselves heard. But they held on to the little boy with all their strength. He looked at them with huge eyes and their fear seemed to waver for a second and turn into astonishment. Then panic returned and he began to scream. It's okay, don't fight, we'll get you to safety. What's your name? <coughs> and what happened? And we, we have come to help you. Get on my back and I, I'll take you to the beach. I want to go home, please. Brian helped Andy on his back and began to swim to shore. Ashton and Maeve followed Aloysius, followed silently and exhilarated. The sky flashed with a bolt of lightning and the water around them burned with light. Thunder crackled overhead and the laugh of the daylight disappeared. Andy screamed and fainted. Brian swam to the bank of the rocks and lay Andy on top, then pulled himself up beside him. Please, Ashton, can we keep him for a while? I've always wanted a brother. No, Ryan, we have to help Andy. He doesn't belong in Belacqua. Neither do we. I know, but we promised Lyara. Oh, let him stay for a little while. It'll be all right. Oh, well, okay then. But just find an hour or two. Then he has to go back. The children sat on the rock and waited for Andy to wake up. They were very excited. They could see land and people walking on the beach. After a while, Andy opened his eyes. W where am I? Who, who are you? Hi, I'm Ryan, and these are my sisters, Ashton and Maeve. Hi. Hi. You were drowning and we saved you. I feel sick. You'll be okay in a few minutes. You've just had a shock. I want to go home. Please help me. It's okay, we will take you home. Yes, it's time to go. No. Just a few more minutes, please. I'm sorry, it's getting late. You must take Andy back. No, no, he can't leave. I want him to stay here. Ashton looked at her brother for a moment and then touched her necklace necklace and began to sing. Don't stop! Arson's sweet voice filled their ears and a beautiful trance-like feeling of peace stole over them. Ryan put Andy on his back and swam. It was hard at first but then Ryan's superhuman strength took over and they swam through the water as graceful as dolphins. Arson and Maeve swam along behind, beside them, following onto Ryan and Letting him pull them along. This is cool. I'm glad you're okay. Um, perhaps I'll stay a while longer. I'm having fun. No, you must go home. Your parents will be very rude. I'll be good. Please, Ashley, let him stay. No, I'm sorry. Well, when can I come back? I don't think so, but we'll think of you often. You're the first child who said. They began to swim towards the beach. They could see lots of boats. The rocks near land were covered with a green slim and sea mud. They heard a clang of bells and the cry of seagulls as they flew above them. From somewhere far away, a church bell began to ring. 
And then a beam of light from the lighthouse swept over them and lit up the sea around them. Well, wow, I've forgotten how beautiful Ireland is. Yes, it is lovely. I'd love to go home. We will, I promise. But we must please my arrow first. They dragged their legs through the heavy water and climbed onto the beach. There was no one around, which was lucky. They sat down on the damp sand and rested for a while. Where do you live, Andy? In Galway. We're here in holidays for a few weeks. Do you know how to reach your hotel? No, but I think it's quite near the beach. I'm sorry, but we can't go any further with you. No, no please, I'll go. I'm sorry. You'll be okay. Try not to worry. We are to see people now and it's dangerous for us to be land for any length of time. Just walk towards that main road on your theory and follow the lights. Soon you'll, be, you'll reach out. Knock on the door and ask people there to help you. Okay. No, don't go. I want you to stay. Ryan, it has to go back. Don't make it any harder than it has to be. Arson began to sing again. Maeve joined in and their sweet voices echoed around the quiet beach. After a few moments, Andy sank to the ground. I'm, I'm dizzy. What's happening? Ah, why did you sing? He won't remember us now. Ryan, I had to wipe his memory. We can't have him going back and telling stories out. Think of Mum and Dad. I think that would upset them. You're mean. Say goodbye to Andy and we have to go. Maeve knelt down and kissed Andy on the cheek and Ryan gave him a hug. Goodbye, Andy. Thanks for being my friend. Come back soon. Goodbye, Andy. Then they pulled his sleeping body for, for farther up onto the beach, away from the waves, and left him in silence. Once back in the water, they swam quickly. They were cold and tired. They swam out to the edge of the harbour, then stopped and looked back at the shore. They watched Andy. He got up slowly, brushed sand off himself, and began to walk towards the lights of the village. Time for Sal. Bye, Andy. Andy looked back over his shoulder for a second. Perhaps he heard them and stared out to sea. Then he shook his head and turned away. Don't worry, Ryan. We'll go back someday. Do you promise? Yes, I do. How? Don't worry, I'll find a way. But for now, let's go back. May I be waiting for us? But Ella wishes was waiting for them. Hiding behind a huge piece of floating bush, he watched at first Ryan, then actually passed by. Then as Maeve went to pass him by, he darted out from his hiding place and grabbed her by the hair. Ah! Ha ha ha, now I've got you. I am the Prince of Balakwa. You have no right to live in my land. I am the one who decides which children live or will live or die. Not you. I must destroy you. No, no, Ashley, Ryan, help, help. But Ashton and Ryan had swum far away and were out of sight. You're all mine now. You must do as I say. No, no, please help. And then she remembered she was a chosen child. She had magic at her fingertips. Aloysius was evil. She was a good person. Everything was going to be okay. As she reached for the necklace, so did Aloysius. With his free hand, he snatched it from her. She tried to grab it back. Help me, please. No, how dare you, you're mine. Oh, please, well, please, help, help. Stop, I want to be human. I need to be human. I must be human. Let me be free of this mere man and his evil charms. There was a crash and a bang and a shower of gold and silver sparks. Aloysius dropped her from his grip as if born. I'll get you, you filthy, stinking, rotten child. I'll get you. Arr. Maeve watched as he was sucked into a whirlpool of dark green water. He grew smaller and smaller and then was gone completely. Maeve looked around her to make sure that she was free and then began to swim as quickly as she could in the direction of Balawaka. And that's where we leave them for now. But do come back soon and I'll tell you all about their next adventure. <laughs>